Senator James Langford of Oklahoma. Senator, you just heard Congresswoman Demings right there. Why not hear from the witnesses? Well, it's the same reason they didn't want to hear from the witnesses, apparently. Uh, they made an additional uh, an initial push to be able to say, would you come? Uh, they said, yes, if you'll subpoena us, if you'll go through the courts, like as a normal process. And the House said, no, we're not going to do that. The House's argument now is a very interesting argument. They're saying the president not only can be impeached in 78 days to the House, the fastest ever in history, but they're now saying the president should not have access to the courts at all at any point through the trial. So the closing argument from Adam Schiff was do not allow the president to be able to go to the courts and to be able to argue these things. As you know, you were around during the Clinton impeachment times. There was a process back and forth to be able to go back and forth to the courts, to be able to make decisions, get that decision made, and then you bring it to the House. But the House did not want to do that. They want to move as fast as possible, and now they want to slow down the trial as much as possible in the Senate. That's just a very odd political strategy for them, more than a fact-finding strategy. And quite frankly, it looks like they're asking the Senate to go be special counsel, go search, go seek out. That's not really the task of the Senate. The task of the Senate is to hear the trial. The House is the one that's actually gathering the information for impeachment. So we're acting on what they're sending us. Of course, the big difference from the Clinton trial, that in the Clinton trial, those witnesses were heard in the House and they were called in the Senate and the White House did not completely stonewall the investigation. Well, the, actually, the, you know, the biggest difference in the whole part with the Clinton investigation was almost four years of special counsel. Uh, they sent over 18 boxes of information from the House over to the Senate. It was a far cry from that to do just a few weeks of investigation in the Senate this time, or in the House this time, and then to be able to send it over to the Senate. So in the Clinton trial, the Senate was acting on and called witnesses that the House had already called and went back through that process again. So it, it, you're right, it is a very different process because the House did not do their homework this time and didn't seem interested in it. All they want to do was get it done by Christmas and then send it to the Senate. And the first thing they said was, don't do the trial like we did our hearings. Do it totally different than we did because it'll be fair if you do it different than how we did it. That's just an odd statement from them. You heard Pat Cipollone at the opening uh, yesterday of his argument say the president did absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, do you agree with that? Do you think it's appropriate for a president to solicit foreign interference in an election? Well, the first question there is, did the president solicit for interference in an election? What Pat, Pat Cipollone said was basically, you know, you, you've heard the argument from the House managers. Now we want to tell you the rest of the story. If I can go back to an old Paul Harvey statement from there. Uh, they're basically doing the cross-examination and asking the simple question, why didn't the House managers read the full statement? Over and over and over again for 21 hours over three days, the House managers would read one sentence but not read the next sentence. For instance, the argument that came up over and over again about the president was withholding uh, something from the uh, from President Zelensky about a White House meeting. But in the phone call itself, the sentence they didn't read was President Zelensky said, hey, if we can't do a White House meeting, let's meet in Poland on September the 1st. The White House agreed to that and set up the meeting for September the 1st. But the White House managers continued to say over and over again he desperately needed uh, this meeting in the White House. That's really what he wanted. But President Zelensky himself is the one that said, let's set up. If we can't do this, then let's do this. This, and they agreed to it and set that up. Of course, that meeting didn't happen. But but you, you say you, you were talking you, you were talking about the transcript, right? But the president's been quite open about soliciting interference. In fact, let's show the let's show the video right now. Well, I would think that if they were honest about it, they'd start a major investigation into the Biden. It's a very simple answer. Likewise, China should start an investigation into the Biden. He's asking the Chinese, he's asking the Ukrainians to, to, to investigate the Bidens. Do you think that's appropriate? Well, what the president's trying to express there is his frustration that no one's paying attention to what is potential corruption uh, with the Bidens in the past, that everyone seems to be focused on him, that he's been through two and a half years of investigation in the Mueller uh, report. Everyone's been focused on him, but no one seems to want to even ask the question about was there potential corruption here. No, uh, he's the asking the Ukrainians and the Chinese. Do you think that's appropriate? I think he is asking for an investigation, as you would with anyone else, with any other American. It is a unique thing, obviously, that this is a person running for political office as well. But it's not new, as the House manager said, that this only started uh, after uh, Biden announced his investigation. This was a consistent theme for the president the, to say everyone should be able to be looked at in this process. But he's asking the Ukrainians and the Chinese to look at it. If he were concerned, why not have the Justice Department look at it? Why not have an investigation through the proper channels? Do you think it's okay to ask a foreign nation 
to investigate a, a political opponent as the president did right there. So to be very clear, the Justice Department is in the process of doing some investigation, working with foreign nations to be able to tr track through how some decisions were made, what was done on the Pfizer report and other things. So there, there is Justice Department work that's happening right now with the Council Durham uh, that's in the process of working that, that, with foreign not, countries. Not investi and, they're not investigating the Bidens. But, but by, they're not investigating the Bidens, that's true. But they are working with foreign that powers the proper and channel? be able to do the investigation. Isn't that the that's proper That's correct. Channel? And that, 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 that is correct, and that is something that is ongoing. Now, if you go back again to the phone call and the transcript that happens in the phone call, the whole issue about Hunter Biden and Rudy Giuliani doesn't originate with the president. President Zelensky actually brings that up to President Trump, saying, hey, I'm working with. It's pretty clear Rudy Giuliani is traveling around the world trying to gather opposition research on behalf of the campaign. The same thing the Hillary Clinton campaign did when they hired a British citizen to be able to go work with the Russians to be able to go gather information on President Trump. Trump. So this this concept of you can't do opposition research for a campaign outside of the United States no, the, the, is not true. The, 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 question, the Clinton campaign did it different, and the, the difference is now Rudy Giuliani did it as well. The question is, is it appropriate for a president to ask a foreign leader to investigate? By that, by extension, let me just see, because you're seeming to say it's okay. If President Obama had asked uh, President Putin to investigate President uh, Trump's invest activities in Russia, had he asked President Xi to investigate the Trump family's businesses in China, that would have been okay? Well, I, I don't know that he did or didn't. I have no idea. And I'm not, well, there's George, no evidence no, that he no. did. You know he didn't do that. Well, George, don't let me put words in my mouth or in your mouth either way on this. I'm not looking for the president to be able to use official uh, roles to be able to do unofficial acts. What I'm saying is in this phone call, in this instance, President Zelensky raised this issue to President Trump, and he responded back to it. A reporter then in the, phone, in the uh, video that you listed asked him a question, said, what do you think he should do? And he responded back to that. It's very different than the president actually initiating all that. Then he's responding to a question. Uh, if he is starting that phone call and saying, here's what I'm calling you about, and I want you to be able to do that, it's very different than President Zelensky raising it to him and saying, yeah, yeah I'm glad you're meeting with uh, Rudy Giuliani. Uh, go ahead and meet with him and get a chance to be able to visit with him. That's not inappropriate. It, but it is a big deal to try to mix official and unofficial in that. That's a challenge that all of us have in every one of our roles. When someone uh, in the Capitol comes and asks us about campaign things, we say, hey, that's not an issue. You need to go talk to a different person from there. The president is literally, when it's being raised in an official setting, saying, talk to Rudy Giuliani and be able to, I'm glad you're visiting with him, but that's a separate issue. I think the plain meaning of the president's video is pretty clear. But final question, will you vote for a motion to dismiss this week? No, there is no motion to dismiss this week. That's already been set. Uh, that was something that's said in the very beginning of the rules. Uh, there is no motion to dismiss. As we go through the process, well, the we'll end up with 16 can. hours of questions, and then we'll have a motion on when we need to have additional witnesses and additional evidence, and then come to a verdict. Oh, well, this, I, I was just the reason I was asking that, because the, the resolution does leave open the possibility that the president's team can move for a motion to dismiss. And I was just asking, if they do, will you vote for it? I don't think there's going to be a motion to okay. dismiss. We, we try to be able to clarify that in the rules initially to be able to make sure that we were getting actually to a verdict at the end of it, not a motion to dismiss. The key thing that really came out this week is the opportunity to be able to hear both sides of the story and to understand a lot of things the House managers brought up. Uh, they didn't read the full sentence, and I encourage people to be able to track and get both sides of the story. And we will be covering the, more of the president's team tomorrow here as well. Senator, thanks for your time this morning. You bet. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.